Hey Nindy fans, Tom here and today we are going to be reviewing Hypercharge Unboxed which comes out very soon on the 31st of January for the Nintendo Switch of course. Me and Mikey both played this one so we've put our heads together and produced this comprehensive review covering all angles of the game. We'll start by discussing the modes and gameplay on offer before moving on to some of the smaller details that we also mentioned in the FAQ video last week. In simple terms, Hypercharge Unboxed is what happens when someone decides that it is more fun to play as a toy than to play with them. You take charge of an action figure who has the duty of protecting three battery powered cars from an onslaught of enemies. I'm talking toy robots, classic army men, spinning tops and even tanks. The core modes act as a combination of tower defence and FPS gameplay revolving around making sure your cores remain protected throughout the duration of the numerous waves you will face. But for those seeking some PvP action, the multiplayer does have a decent array of options to satisfy your needs. What is immediately obvious when you start playing Hypercharge Unboxed is the amount of passion that went into the development of it. So many details are hidden away, most of which will be ignored by the majority of players. For example, cardboard boxes in the toy shop level have fully completed postage stickers with addresses and all the details. It does an incredible job of making players feel like they've been shrunk down into a real world. Of course, what this content lacks in size... I couldn't resist, I mean come on, it's a perfect joke. It more than makes up for it in volume. A multiplicity of game modes and styles of play ensure that despite standing just 10 inches tall, Hypercharge Unboxed offers no shortage of content. On that note, it is time to go into the nitty gritty details of what is on offer for the relatively low sum of only $20, $18 if you get it before it comes out. To start with, the current version of the game at launch has 10 maps ranging from a garden to a toy store and even a rather messy bathroom. Each and every one is brilliantly designed and packed full of small easter eggs to find and places to explore. Digital Cyber Cherries have done an outstanding job on building maps that not only look great but integrate brilliant ways to move around them. Window ledges can be rang along, ladders can be climbed and you can even get underneath the duvet in the bedroom level. If you think you can reach it, there is probably a way to do it, it just might not seem obvious how you get there at first. Collectibles are also dotted around in these hard to reach places and serve as a way to occupy yourself should you end up with free time between waves. I haven't encountered a single map yet I really didn't get along with and this is a testament to the love put into them. Once you stop gazing around at the gorgeous environments, you'll remember about the rest of the game and the job you have to do. I mean, that's why you bought this thing, of course. Each map has three hypercars, as they are labelled, that you must protect from the waves of toys that are determined to take them down. They are usually distant from one another, which at times can make single player rather tricky, but the quick pace of movement prevents this from becoming too severe of an issue if you plan well enough, although at times I was really stretched when playing by myself. Each court is surrounded by slots for your potential defences, which we'll talk more about later, and in some levels such as a bedroom you can even build little extra things that are exclusive to that level, such as in the bedroom you can build castle walls around your cars to provide a little bit more protection. Little quirks like these are present level to level and add a lot to the overall experience as it makes each map feel different from the others. You can further bolster your defences by acquiring batteries which will charge up your car's shield. Preventing any damage is crucial to securing the highest accolades, so managing your shield levels becomes crucial in later waves, as your defences will become overwhelmed by the horde of toy enemies. The batteries are normally hidden away in rather inconspicuous places, so they require a bit of work to find but they are well worth it for the edge they give. The buildables available vary massively, from the basic glue traps and lego brick walls, which I love by the way to anti-aircraft rockets and machine gun turrets, all of course with the toyish charm the rest of Hypercharge Unbox delivers. Most of the buildables are fairly well balanced with different costs and damage levels, although some are definitely stronger on different maps. I'll let you figure that out though, that's half the fun, it really is. You'll find yourself switching up buildable sets between levels and this is only a good thing because it provides a lot more replayability. You can really scale the difficulty of certain maps based on which buildables you choose to use. On the topic of replayability, there are three levels of difficulty with a fourth unlockable one as you play through. I personally found the default level fairly substantial, especially in single player, but after testing the various levels, I think they scale fairly well to the competence of the player you'll be playing. If you want a challenging co-op, you'll definitely be leaning towards the hardest difficulty though. But why would you want things to be easy? You should be looking for a challenge. A lot of tower defence games opt to have blanket levels of difficulty across the levels, 
which makes no sense to me. So it's great to see Hypercharge bucking this trend. If anything, it sometimes leans towards the easier side, I'd have to say, but the option is there to go back and increase the challenge anyway, so it isn't as big of a problem as it could be. Although, I did find sometimes the waves within a level suddenly ramped up from 0 to 100. I'd be there thinking, yeah, I'm comfortable, and all of a sudden, the spinning blades drop down on me, and it's complete chaos and I die. The Switch is lacking in really good multiplayer FPS games, especially ones that have offline and online options. I haven't had a chance to dive into the offline modes just yet, living on my own has that effect. But I have tried all the online modes, and to put it simply, they are brilliant. I implore you to buy this game for the cooperative gameplay alone, but the PvP options on top are phenomenally well made. The highlight for me is definitely the Plague mode, which is a mode akin to Infected from the Call of Duty series. One player starts as the Infected with some unique abilities, and has to infect the rest of the players until only one toy remains. The other PvP modes are your standard team deathmatch and, and free for all mode essentially, and they too are really fun, but the play mode is just something else. As I said, the co-op multiplayer is in concept the main pull of Hypercharge, but the PvP would be worth it even if you have no interest in co-op play. Speaking of the multiplayer, and especially the online, I could see many people being hesitant over Hypercharge, mainly because of the known issues with the Switch and online games. So could you imagine my shock when, upon booting up and creating an online lobby for the first time, it ran pretty much flawlessly. After getting to grips with how exactly to make a lobby and bring plays into it, I played for two hours with no hitches at all, and that is with a connection going across the Atlantic. Me and Mikey were really impressed by how well the online has been designed in Hypercharge. There is even a server browser to make finding games even easier, too many games overlook small features like this, and it's another testament to the passion put into the product. I must say, the controls are quite confusing at first, with Hypercharge opting for the classic Bump Jumper system, which uses the triggers to jump and sprint instead of the classic B button. However, after an initial confusion over this, and in-game tutorials coming post-launch I must add, I felt quite comfortable using it, as it allows you to still aim while jumping, something which has always been an issue for me in shooter games. Aside from this, I found the controls fairly easy to pick up after a few minutes of playing, although it is worth stating that while you can opt to play with a traditional jumping slash running setup, that being jumping being B and running being pressing in on the L3 button, this is the limit of control customization. I am a massive advocate for control bindings, so it is a shame to see them miss here. At the same time though, we do have to praise the gyro controls, which are a massive plus. They should be an essential feature in FPS games on all cable systems to me, so seeing them here is a brilliant sign of the care for gamers on the Switch version of Hypercharge Unbox. I will say though, I wish I could make them a little more sensitive, because even at the highest level I find myself wanting to push them even higher. A patch could fix this though, and I'd love to see this improved in the future. The biggest fear I had coming into Hypercharge Unbox was definitely how it would perform on the Switch. I mean, I can bring up a lot of promising Switch titles which fail to impress because of poor performance such as frame rate, resolution, and so on. In my 15 hours of game time so far, which was a combination of single and multiplayer, I encountered very few performance hitches. A few seconds here and there when things get hectic, but for 99.9% .9 of my time, Hypercharge holds an incredibly stable 30 frames per second. It is a shame of course that it can't hit 60, and perhaps one day it could do. The developers have said they are considering a performance and resolution mode, which would obviously decrease resolution to boost up performance, but being able to hit 30 so consistently is good enough for me and I think it will be for most people. One final thing before we wrap things up which I think is definitely worth discussing is the customization options. and. Guess what? It is all free. No microtransactions, no loot boxes, nothing. Everything is unlocked through in-game challenges. Now this shouldn't have to be something that we praise, but I feel like gaming's in a state now where we kinda do. Even more helpful is the fact that each unlock displays exactly what you need to do to get it. Of course, if you prefer not to know, you can do that, but I found it really helpful to be able to track exactly what I need to do. If I knew that I needed to go back into the toy shop level and accomplish a certain thing, then I can go back and do that to get what I wanted. The different options themselves are pretty decent too, with the ability to change heads, outfits, gun skins and so on. My own favourite was definitely unlocking the Lego head, which I continue to use all the time. 
I'd like to think more skills and unlockables will come with future content and that seems to be the case, but at launch it is a great set of options and all for free. On the topic of future content, I'll finish by bringing up the recently released roadmap detailing what lies ahead over the next few months for Hypercharge Unboxed. By May, the developers have stated there will be new game modes, new characters, in-game voice chat and more maps, as well as additions to both weapons and enemy rosters. Of course, I won't review content which is in the game yet, but alongside the promise to also commit to this content, but to work on the game according to reviews and see what needs to be improved according to the base of users, it is well worth consideration if you're looking into this game. My first review of 2020 has set a incredibly high mark for other games to follow. So it is with great pleasure that I award Hypercharge Unboxed my first Golden Heart of 2020. It is a game I will encourage people to buy and one I will be returning to as soon as I finish making this video. Combining FPS and tower defense in such a masterful way is well worth praising. And whilst it isn't perfect, no game can be. Hypercharge is well worth investing in, not only because of the product now, but because of the one it will become and because the developers actually care. I hope you enjoyed this review, I hope that it helped you make a decision on Hypercharged Unboxed. If you're interested in more content such as co-op gameplay, FAQs and also some single player, be sure to check out the videos that will be linked down in the description. If you're interested in more of this content related to Hypercharge and other brilliant indie games then be sure to subscribe. My name is Tom, thanks so much for watching this video, peace out.